for a lot of the things we want to do in our lab, we need a flame because the flame actually provides us not only with a way to sanitize or sterilize, sorry, um, tools, but it also can be used to create a safe workspace. And I'll talk about that a little later in the video. Uh, now, in the lab, we traditionally use a Bunsen burner, uh, but of course these are so somewhat expensive. They can be uh, a little dangerous to use around the house. And so a cheap option that you can make often just with scrap materials lying around the house is something called an alcohol lamp. And all you really need for this is a small jar. The important thing is it has to be glass and the lid has to be metal. There should be no plastic. You need a piece of scrap cloth. Now this has to be pure cotton, so a piece of an old pair of jeans, for example, is ideal. This will act as a wick. Uh, you need a flammable fluid that's safe to burn indoors. So this could be fondue fuel, uh, methanol, which is sometimes called wood alcohol, or rubbing alcohol. What you don't want to be using is anything petroleum-based. So no lighter fluid, kerosene, anything like that, because they throw off some really powerful fumes that you just don't want in your home. So the process of making these is pretty simple. Take your lid off of your jar and just drill a hole in the center of it. Just like that. You now want to force through that hole your wick, and I think I might have made this hole a little on the small side here, so I might need to drill that with a larger drill bit. Oh, there we go. The important thing is, is we want that to be a fairly tight fit. We don't want that just to fall through. Get that out of the way. So now, we want to fill our jar with our fuel. You want the container, you know, as full as it'll go. Uh, although if you have enough to completely fill the jar, you'll want to make sure there is a small airspace at the top. Attach your lid with the wick and the fluid. Oops, I do not want to go on now. Make sure the wet, wick is wet. I actually have a little bit more wick sticking up here than you want. Normally you just want a small, about a centimeter long piece. And once that wick is damp, you can light it. And there's your alcohol lamp. So this will create a safe workspace uh, for us to, to do our, our uh, yeast culturing with. You might be wondering how it is that an alcohol lamp provides us with a safe plate to work. Well, it actually does one of two things. The first thing it does is it provides us with a flame which we can use to sterilize instruments. And there you can see the loop's red hot. So that is obviously going to be completely sterile and we can now use that to go into a plate or a source of cells um, to get some yeast without having to worry about contaminating the yeast. The other thing it does is it creates some air currents which help us to keep things clean. Basically, the heat of the fire uh, causes the air near the lamp to rise. This draws in air along the bench. It then goes vertical into a column and it spills out around the edges. What this then means is that there's a work area um, extending out about half a foot in either direction from the lamp where we can put objects and open tubes and know that they're going to be um, relatively clean. So for example, if I open a tube in this area and I put the lid here, I know it shouldn't get contaminated because the area here is moving upwards and so dust and stuff should not fall into the tube. I can also use the flame to very briefly uh, clean the edge of the tube for pouring things out. And do the same thing with the lid, put it back on, and that allows me now to keep my tube sterile. Same thing can be done with a petri dish. Petri dishes, um, if they're placed near here, we can open them up and work with them with again the airflow carrying dust and contaminants away from the dish. Put the lid back on, the dish is covered and it's clean. And of course, any tools that are going into the dish, we would first flame uh, on the lamp. Now, of course, when everything's done, you need to put it out. And the nice thing with the alcohol lamps is usually you can just blow them out. <laughs> there we are. So that's the basics of a, of a uh, alcohol lamp, how to build it, how to use it. In my later videos, we'll obviously show you using this for very specific things like making streak plates or picking colonies.